now, angle the camera again. All these things. And now I've actually said since we were talking about sort of quarantine and life in quarantine and all that, that if one of the children needs to come in, that's fine. Yeah. You know, because if, you know, if I've got to hold a baby on my lap for a minute or something like that, well, that's part of life in quarantine. So I said they don't Aww. have to panic. <laughs> so you're going to be quarantined with family. Yeah, around. the family. Yes, our son and daughter-in-law and babies moved in um, a month ago. Oh, that's not. I mean, it's nice. I know it's. It might be difficult in some ways. I actually. Th and, uh, yes, of course it's tiring, and of course it's <laughs> you know being adjusted. I mean, you know that would be crazy to say it's not tiring, but I think I would be so much more exhausted worrying about them. And then because oh. they're here and I'm so tired, I actually am not worrying as much about my daughter, who I will probably actually have to move up to shortly when she has a second baby. Um, mm. But I would be so worried about her if we were sitting here alone. And But I'm too tired to worry about anything. <laughs> that is true. It is true. When you get used to working and living in a hustle and a bustle, yeah, sometimes peace and quiet can be dangerous. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's interesting watching on Twitter. And, and as you say, let's go back to maybe this is a good time for us all to drop a bit of vanity to find out. I'm guessing that that is actually your natural hair color and some of the yeah. rest of us are going to find out what color our hair is. But it starts to go curly. I have like an Annie. I'll be like, it'll just grow like this. Oh, right. Yes. And yes. I don't like it. I feel like I look <laughs> like my brother. <laughs> but I didn't try on 16 different tops as I normally do. <laughs> no, everyone's been really enjoying seeing people's places. And are you sitting where you write normally or are you well, in a different uh, normal, area? Yes. So this is my, my normal office. Um, but at the minute, I'm actually working from our bedroom. So, and then because my son isn't working today, I've moved my computer back here. You're both writing a manuscript let me have a look the cuckoo's flight cuckoo's as flight, well as yes. as well as releasing the compiled news yes, island it hasn't taken any work well the yeah, writing the book didn't take any particular work um i had to write a a new foreword and but what i did actually just let me let me check i'll see what, what we've You've got it there i'm looking forward I, to this this is would be a present for my seven-year-old i'm hoping she's old enough uh now so oh yes even i can like, introduce her, her read it well yeah but... my husband reads to her every night for an hour so oh they, they'll no. love i think it's, i think it's especially seven year old who's used to being read too um yeah i mean after all it, like the movie started um with the producer needing a book for her eight-year-old and it was a bit hard for him to read himself, so so he could nearly do it. So she started him off by reading the first chapter. So that was why it became a movie. And she loved it. That's yes. amazing. Yes, yeah, it was just that random. Wow. That's right. So what I did for this new one was um, I wrote a letter at the an email, of course, because it's all emails. Yeah. I wrote an email from Alex to Nim. Oh, we're going to have candles. Oh, that's fantastic. Ooh. Daddy making a cake. It's candles. With candles. Oh, how lovely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few isolation birthdays as well. <laughs> I'm not sure who's, this will have to be a doll's birthday. I'm not sure whose birthday it is. <laughs> Any excuse. Any excuse. Yeah. Yeah, or it might be her cousin who had a birthday the other day, so they, they did sing happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh. oh that's yeah. So I so. wrote an email from Alex to Nim for happy 21st birthday, and oh. then at the end, I wrote, um, yeah, a sort of author's note. Yes, it is called author's note, author note. Um, it's sort of like the story of the whole thing sort of starting from That's the idea so... when I was eight through to the movies and and the reaction I thought it was important you know um the kids who uh, I think I 
when she, yeah, like the kids who write to me sound just like Nim. And the reasons they choose for how they're just like Nim are really ah. varied and interesting. Like that like, one, one what, yeah. Um, well, I think the most radically different <laughs> was a little boy on a farm in Alberta, which is a, a prairie province in Canada. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm just like Nim because I live on a farm. Oh. And so I think what he meant, he was isolated. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And, so I I really like that example as, as you know, how we identify with people in fiction. Yeah. And of course, I like the fact that it's because it's a boy. Yeah. Identifying old. with Nim. Yes, yeah. yes. Cause boys, well, we're all conditioned to identify with male and female protagonists because there aren't as many female. And so exactly. we're kind of stuck, whereas the boys aren't always encouraged to do the same in return so. not at all and i've had people say to me like if i've not been doing a signing or something and um oh but don't you have a book for boys so well actually a lot of boys like this because it's all about adventure no yeah. no a boy cat oh. and, and i've had people literally oh. say to me a boy can't read a book about a girl and and sometimes i may have verged on being a bit rude well, I just like to think that boys could be smart enough to learn to read about girls. And I think they've already lost the customer, so. Oh. <laughs> well, it might give them, you never know, one day they might think back and realise that, oh, yes. The only other additions are I had some little poems that Nim wrote. And so in between each of the books, oh. and at the end, there's one of Nim's little poems about her friends. Ah. Oh. I can't wait. I'm really excited, <laughs> really excited to get this. It's a very exciting oh. thing to have to show her because it's being re-released as well and it has this other content and she likes, she has a, often has a lot of questions about those sorts of things. And so to have the, the, the matter at the beginning and at the end and the poems, I think she'll really enjoy. It's very exciting for me. Oh, <laughs> and oh. so how does it go with you when you're releasing one uh with all this nostalgic emotional journey that's going there along with writing another novel actually the last little while i couldn't even think about poor nim um and especially with thinking well like what i had planned was sort of fairly low-key stuff but just um having birthday parties at any bookshop that you know wanted to do it and because we were sort of calling it her 21st birthday rather than her 25th, yeah. 21st anniversary. Just yes, seemed fun. birthday is lovely, yeah. So, and when obviously that wasn't going to happen, I just sort of put back in mind, okay, I'll have to do some stuff online. I cannot think about it till I finish this draft. And that's basically what I did. Was I, I finished the draft and, and I did a Zoom talk, or like a, little online workshop which as you probably know takes up a lot more energy than the sort of 20 minutes on screen would suggest yes. yeah. <laughs> and then I had a little collapse for a couple of days oh. <laughs> well no not really but, you, but it's you know, exhausting yeah yes to do a bit of catching up on I actually had a hundred unread emails which isn't um which just, just isn't like me um wow I may have a few hundred waiting for answers, but I usually read them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I've just been kind of plowing through. And we are actually still trying to organize the house because I kind of picked up my stuff from the office and moved it into the bedroom. Every day I'm going to finish tidying it up. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's hard to write with a full house, I'm finding, because I don't get any time alone anymore. So writing no. from scratch, like, um, I don't know, for you, it's a relief to have the draft finished because, for, yeah, for me, writing the new material, it's really difficult with everybody around who needs me and I've got three children, yes. so it's a big, right. busy house and I don't know when I'll, um, when I'll get back to actually raw material. Raw material is, you need a lot more concentration for that. Mm. And this is a really embarrassing admission. I haven't reread the draft. Like I handed it in as I finished um, because, well, I'd already had a five-month extension. Um, 
That's amazing. I love that. And I mean, this is just what I would tell people you should never, ever, ever do. But in the end, they said they were ready for it. I said, I'll read it with you. And I've read 20 pages. Um, well, I read 20 pages the morning before I sent it. I, right, I'm sending it at 8.30. I'll do what I can. And I've read another 10 since then. Um, That's great. Well, I, I think you probably find this a bit too. I mean, it's in some ways it's easier being really busy, you know, yeah. just picking up from the people who, you know, even other writers on Twitter who obviously are, you know, people who've been writers all their lives or um, obviously really struggling mm. uh, emotionally. And I, I think there's a big advantage in being busy I would be great if you actually had 10 minutes to think about your new book and if I you know could sit down quietly and read for 10 minutes but um I think we're probably luckier this has definitely kept me going because I'll have something to do every day I can achieve and finish as well which as you know with a family you rarely have a moment where you finish anything it just goes round and round in circles. You clean it, it gets messy. You cook it, it's gone. You have to cook again. It all just goes around and around. So to have this thing where I can, uh, and it's a creative process, you can record and polish and produce and it's done. And it's like, I did a thing. Yes, it's so nice to do a thing. And so I got to speak to Goku to because it's, ah, you can finish it. It's can you do cool. them? They are hard. My mum does those and it's never clicked for me i'm a jigsaw person and i love puzzles but something about them uh, it missed it missed me by i think that's so why i like to do them because you know the first time i did one you know an easy one took me about an hour <laughs> and so i thought okay i have to get better at this <laughs> but it's it's like a, I, I think sometimes a closed-ended activity when yeah. you've got all this sprawling manuscript and, you know, and then you make the mistake of reading a bit of research and say, oh my God, I should have included this. This would improve things. And, <laughs> you oh. know, it could go on. I, I feel, I always feel I could spend the rest of my life reading any particular book, you know, because I would just never stop editing. And yes. <laughs> so yes. It, it's nice to do some closed activities but because yes yeah, most of the time it's sort of I'll walk out to the kitchen and put the kettle on oh look there are some pants somebody has shed on the way I'll pick those up oh they're kind of wet I'll put them in the laundry and oh there's a stack of washing to go out of the laundry and you know half an hour later I get back snowballs. and I never did put the kettle on <laughs> and that's with my daughter-in-law going absolutely flat out all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I have, I'm quite good at accepting the level of mess that needs to exist in this house. And my mum, she had four children and she often says to me, but that's what your home should look like when you have four children, you have three yeah. children or for me, there's just so much. There's yeah. definitely a lot of reading going on. And I know that people, some people aren't convinced, you know, whether whether this is really happening, but the amount of books that my children are going through, there's an upside. <laughs> yeah, I think there's very much an upside. And I think we need to celebrate it because nobody, uh, you know, we're not celebrating the disasters no. and we need to celebrate what's, what we can pull out. I think that's really important. Yeah. We, we actually have Easter Sunday because we, we didn't get around to and didn't want chocolate Easter eggs. Um, because nobody needs another sugar high in this house and <laughs> so we but we did produce the um, this this Easter puzzle which had been given by another author friend Christine Belint who's um whose children have outgrown it and <laughs> so there's been a bit of sort of dropping off in mailboxes around the neighborhood as people oh. tidy up and guess what they need and but yeah, we did um, like American Thanksgiving for Easter lunch and um, just actually, you know, said what we were thankful for. And, and we're also noticing, you know, like the, uh, the two-year-old that you just met. I mean, 
she's learning so much better, you know, to sit down at the table and have a family meal because everybody's home at dinner time. We can have dinner really early. We can eat at 5.30. Eat at 5.30. (laughs) It's just so much easier with a family, you know, but obviously when people are going out to work, it's impossible. And Mm. so I I think there's some really nice things, yes, and the number of bedtime stories that can get wiggled out because you can ask several different adults. And (laughs) I think she had probably about 18 bedtime stories last night. (laughs) That's good. She's good. She's good. (laughs) And the other granddaughter um, will often um, FaceTime me. She's also two and a half and um, ask, and I'll read her a bedtime story. Oh, that's so lovely. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we do. Didi's on the call. I'm not sure. What can you see of my background? It's too small for me to film. I can see that you have illustrations on the wall and some piles of books there. Um, Oh, so illustrations. Yeah. Yeah, they're from um, Poppy's Path by Ritva Butila. Yeah, or just a minute, they're, they're little bits of chocolate paper. Um, well, there is has, the bookshelf, yeah. They're... Right, normally you can see some of the Nims Island copies and then I had one lovely display unit with, and I was given, after Dragonfly Song, some amazing gifts from people and um, somebody gave me a, like a museum replica of um, the Knossos snake priestess and then another of like a replica fresco painter in Greece sent me a copy of uh, the Swallows Dance which is why I named the book Swallows the next book Swallows Dance um wow so it's quite lovely but again at the minute of course every breakable thing in the house actually is in the closed glass cabinet so the display is not quite so elegant yes no (laughs) but it's a good idea they're waiting to be fixed (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. And I really hope you have an enjoyable isolation with your family. Well, thank you. It's, um, it's, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you and to meet you. I feel like you yeah. should have known each other before. I know. <laughs> right, bye. The number you have dialed has been changed.